Good evening, class. Tonight, I'd like to talk about um, question sheet number 12. I'd like you to take that information out, and then we'll move on to the questions from chapter 13. If there's a little bit of time left over from either one of these, I'd like to introduce you to the uh, uh, roof drain uh, section in the book. Okay, in any case, let's start with uh, page number 12. Okay. So the first question was, what are the maximum fixture units on a three inch stack? Now, this might sound familiar. We, I mean, this, uh, these questions can be repetitive, uh, to say the least. And uh, this one here, I don't know if we asked it directly, but it has come up. We have been on this page before. Okay, so let's see what page 169, that's where the answer is. The answer is 48 fixture units. That's on page 169. Okay, it's a uh, three-inch, a three-inch vent. Okay, that would be the stack at the bottom where it says uh, stack that's vertical. Okay, vent stack. All right. The answer would be the uh, what, fourth line down. It's got 48 with a couple of asterisks. Now, we've gone over this a number of times, and I think you're all aware that no matter how you slice it, a three-inch pipe, whether it's vertical or horizontal, can only do three toilets. Even though a three-inch pipe can handle probably five bathrooms, um, because of that three-toilet three, three toilet limit, that's what it is. So if you read to the bottom of the page, it says... Asterisk, uh, note number one, no more than two toilets on a branch, which is a floor, or three on the whole stack. Okay, so that is a question. I believe it has popped up before, but it's one you absolutely want to know. Okay, the next question. Uh, what's the minimum size pipe underground? Now, this is on page uh, 167, and let's, let's take a look at that. So just flip back. It just happens to be one page back. And it mentions uh, two inch pipe. Okay, two inch, uh, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Let's take a look at that again. Okay, now remember, if you're using any book other than the green one that came out a few years ago, your pages are gonna be way off. Uh, you're probably gonna see that uh, it's off by about 20 pages. Okay, so the answer is uh, minimum size waste pipe underground is uh, two inch. Now that would go for both vent and drain. Minimum size waste under the floor, uh, it's almost the same question. Okay, it's two inch, very repetitive there. Okay, if you have a question on that, you can bring it up in class. Okay, uh, I have, uh, there's a couple of spots where you can find this question on page 167 under, uh, about halfway down the page, 7A and 7B. It says no uh, the drainage system underground, no less than two inches in diameter. Okay, it is located in another spot, which unfortunately I don't have right here, but I think you're all aware of that. We have beat that to death on numerous occasions. All right, so the answer is two inch. All right, number uh, 103. If a building sewer came into the house above the building drain, what would you do? Okay, the, the uh, definition or the question is, I didn't think it was that particularly well worded. Uh, what they're looking for is if you got a drain lower than, excuse me, if you've got a fixture lower than a drain, how do you handle that? Building drain coming in. Actually, they, they don't call it a building drain. They're calling, I mean, they're calling it a building drain, not a fixture. Building sewer. Okay. Uh, let's do that. 
Let's see what that looks like. The easiest way to explain this would be like this here. This would be a foundation wall going down to a footing. Pipe goes through the wall like this. And now you have a bathroom down here somewhere, basement bathroom. So what happens? You have a toilet down here like this. The question is, how do you get this toilet up to here? Well, obviously you can't unless you have some kind of mechanical lift, some kind of uh, something other than gravity. Okay, so this would be the building drain right here going out. And what you have to do is what we've already done in class. Now, I don't know if tier one, when I was trying to do two at once, but it would look like this. Here's the sewage. Um, this would be the, the pipe coming in. And then over here, we would come off with, um, bring this up, maybe have a lab on it over here. But this would be the sewage uh, ejector pump in here. And the water would come in at the top and it would pump out like this through the top of the tank and in. It's just a glorified sump pump. Okay. And it would pump up and in. A rather expensive thing. This would be flush with the top of the floor, which of course would be right here. Like that. Okay, this would be outside. So the question there is, uh, how do you handle this? Now, another thing, <clears throat> it's not asked right here, but uh, what is this called? Everything below this point is called a building subdrain. You cannot drain anything by gravity below this point. So those of you who've done a sewage ejector, whether it's one of those uh, very convenient ones where the whole sink, possibly uh, water closet sink is on a platform and you just pipe that or you do it the old fashioned way where you hammer into the floor and put a what, small trash can size container in here with a pump and then have your pipe drain into it. This is a nice setup like this here. Expensive, but you can always get and change the pump if you have to. This is a cover right here, right flush with the floor for those of you who haven't seen it. Right, it has a cover with, uh, it's like a sill seal foam gasket for odor proof and uh, it's supposed to be waterproof, but I don't know about that. Anyway, uh, it can be, it is accessible, it has to be accessible, of course, to get at the pump. Now here's the problem. In fact, I'd like to put a bathroom in my own house in the basement, but I can do this easily because I've got exactly that situation. The problem is, how do I get a vent out the out of here. Big question mark. Very easy to draw it. Took me what two seconds. Okay, the problem is getting a vent. Uh, you guys that have been around a while have probably run into this where you gotta get creative. You run through closets, you try to snake it up through the wall. But you're running a two inch pipe, right? This is two inch. This is two inch. Okay, you're running a two inch pipe up and out or back into a stack somewhere. Now, when it's a uh, septic tank, a lot of times this pipe is so high, there is no future vent. I don't have a future vent. Wish I did. I don't. So that bathroom might just be a pipe dream. I might not ever get to it. Okay, anyway, getting off the uh, actual question. That's called a building subdrain. If the, if the uh, building sewer comes into the house above the building drain, yeah, the building drain in this case is this high right here, right? Three, four feet high. And excuse me, the building sewer, which is connected to the building drain, right? Then the building drain inside the house has to be lifted up and in. And everything below this point, this is a big deal, is a building sub drain. Remember that. It's part of the definitions. And they mentioned here, how would you solve it? The uh, answer is to install the sewage ejector. Now the pages, for those of you who didn't find this or didn't look it up, the definition sewage uh, building subdrain is on page 86. And 
in the book, if you go to page 182, uh, they get into a little bit more. Let's take a peek at that. Page 182. Okay, building subdrain about a third of the way down. It's below the public gravity uh, storm sewer. Right. It has to be automatically lifted and discharged. And notice that it says automatically. It can't be some kind of manual switch. This has got to be like on a float. Very much like a tank on a water closet. Right. Uh, except this time when the water gets up too high in this tank here, there's a float operated from this that will kick it on. So when the water gets up, near this pipe the pump will come on and pump it down to just above the height of the pump remember don't forget these pumps are water cool like a submersible sump pump if the water if these things run too long with no water to cool them they will fry themselves okay let's see what else we got here what's the minimum size water closet vent okay this is uh, question number 104 go to page 178 all right, and uh, see what they have to say. All right, and on 178, what you're going to find is that the minimum size is going to be inch and a half, All right? And the reason it's inch and a half is because that's half the diameter, and it does spell it out there, bottom of the page. Okay, minimum size vent for a water closet, inch and a half. Minimum size vent piping allowed. This is a good place for this question. Is inch and a quarter. Now, some of you have probably never ever used inch and a quarter for anything. Very unusual pipe. And it is more, exp now, you're not concerned about prices, but uh, inch and a quarter pipe is more expensive than inch and a half. My guess is because they don't sell much of it. All right, at least not for plumbing. Now, inch and a uh, Quarter vent could handle up to a two and a half inch pipe. We don't do two and a half inch, so that's out. So it's either a two inch pipe, which would be inch and a quarter, or an inch and a half pipe, which would be inch and a quarter, or a three inch pipe. Now you got to kick it up to uh, inch and a half. Okay. And what's the maximum size? Min excuse me, minimum size for wet venting. Now we've covered this quite a bit, but let's go over it one more time. Wet venting is a very big deal. I know when I was an inspector, uh, I think I, maybe it was tier two, I told this to, I used to look at a job and uh, you could tell right away if somebody knows what they're doing, if their work is neat, it doesn't take long, a matter of seconds, you can see it. You can't see the whole job, but you can see it, enough of it. And uh, you find, what I used to find is if the work was done neatly, of uh, it usually was done correctly. Not always, but usually. That was a good sign. If it was really a mess, glue dripping off everything, solder all over. This is years ago, of course, when we used more copper. Solder dripping off um, oversized holes, things like that. Uh, there was usually some violations that went along with it, beside the work being messy. And the code is very vague on, it just says good workmanship. They leave it up to the, I guess, the local inspector. It's very hard to, I found that a little bit hard to enforce. Usually it was enforceable because their work was um, incorrect. There were mistakes in addition to being messy. Okay, getting back to the wet venting. Now, in Massachusetts, Brown's a bit different. You can actually use inch and a half for uh, venting a lav, but no tub. I kind of like Mass's way of doing business. Uh, let's see. Let's say you had a stack and you had an upstairs bathroom. All stack vented. Okay. Not the fancy. Just remember that it's there. Then on the lower floor right here, all of these fixtures got to be vented. So what you can do, and most guys do, is to wet vent it, two inch, 
two inch. Now, if that was in Rhode Island, you could actually make that inch and a half. Forget that. All right. Hopefully you'll get your Rhode Island license, all of you one day, because you never know where you're going to be. And Rhode Island is so close by half of my work ended up being in Rhode Island. It was very evenly split between the two states. Okay, so what you could do here, now remember, with this wet vent, some of you guys know how to do this, you can put your tub or shower on the end of this right here because it's vented right here. Okay, very, very convenient. Now, if this was underground, remember, you've got one pipe breaking through the floor rather than three for individual venting. I don't know anybody who does anything but wet vent under a concrete floor. And I believe some of you this year have told me the same thing. Okay, so if this was underground, this is probably the only way the boss is going to do it. Okay, above ground, uh, again, it's still convenient and it's still less piping. And when I used to see that as an inspector, right away I knew the guy knew what he was doing and I had to make myself go inspect. Excuse me. I thought I put the phone in the other room. Anyway, that was Mr. Spam calling. He calls me probably twice a day. I'm sure you guys get those same calls. Okay, so uh, wet venting, we've gone over it before. Really go out of your way to learn everything you can about wet venting, okay? It's very convenient, and it's a very popular test question. And as I started to say, once I saw somebody use wet venting as a part of their system, I knew that they knew knew what they were doing. Okay, uh, let's see what else we got here. Wet venting, dandy clean out. All right, we'll shift gears here a bit. Look at number one hundred seven. What's the minimum size for dandy clean out? Okay, let's go to. If I can read my own writing here, it's uh, page looks like one twenty one. The size of the uh, dandy is an uh, inch and a half, which would match your smallest drain size. You don't see too many inch and a half dandies, but they're out there. If you're working in an older house, you might catch it on a uh, uh, copper line. Could be PVC. All right, let's see if it's on one page 121. Let's check my, my writing here. Well, look at that. Amazing. Okay, it's on page 121. Right in the middle of the page, just above the middle of the page where the uh, uh, three ring hole punches, hole is. It's the same nominal size up to the, uh, as the pipes up to four inch and not less than four inch for larger piping. So in other words, if you go bigger than four inch, even though this book doesn't do much with over four inch, remember, you can use a four inch dandy clean out for a six inch line. Now, when you get up to anything that scale, six inch pipe, I can assure you, it's going, if it's new work, it's gonna come with some very tight specs because it's a big, big project. They're not gonna be relying on the local plumber to figure out a big commercial building like that, right? There will be specs and you won't have to worry so much about it. However, you do need to know that for a test. Now, one thing you might wanna remember is this. This is not one of the questions, by the way, but on an exam, you're gonna have a foundation wall that extends exaggerate a little bit. You got pipe coming down. This would be the basement right here, right? And you'd have your um, pipe coming down and uh, between the floor joists comes out here like this, just missing the corner and away it goes across the cellar. But you've all seen this. Might be a little further down here. You can't put a clean out here. You can fit it in. Who's going to use this? It's going to be worthless. All right, so this would be out. So if you put a clean out on a Y here, you get away with it until you got to inspect it. And then the inspector tell you to forget it because you can't clean it up. Now, I know a lot of you guys have installed these, but not everybody. So where the dandy should go would be right here, right? So this would be 12 inches from the wall 
to the dandy. Okay, that way you can get a your little snake in there and go that way or that way. Don't forget, I don't do much strain work. I did enough when I was younger. I never liked it. If you're going to snake backwards, just be ready for all hell breaking loose if there's a blockage up here. Okay? Especially if you've got a customer who messed with it. And here's the deal. Some of you probably experienced this. If you ask a customer, did you put anything down the drain to help clear this stoppage? A lot of times they'll tell you no because they're embarrassed to admit that they was fooling with it. And so they just tell you no. The problem is they might have put down some uh, acid up top up above you and you're poking at it with your wire and it all comes down at you right um problem big problem if you're not smart you know you don't wisely wear gloves you know some really good rubber gloves and uh splash proof goggles there are such things they don't all have those little holes in them and um probably should have some clothing on too that's uh although you know you know we don't we don't do many drains so I'd just go with the goggles or something for your hands, all right? But be careful because people don't always tell you the truth. I didn't do many drains. In fact, I got out of as many as I could, quite honestly, once I got to be got my own business. And I've had a, several people tell me there was nothing in there, and I could feel it on my fingers. When there's acid in there, you can feel it, all right? So be careful and keep some fresh water around or if it's not a sink close by, okay? So be careful. All right, so 12 inches to center would be inch and a half. Too good. Okay. And if it was a bigger pipe, inch and a half or two inch, like three or four inch pipe, because it's a bigger pipe and your your uh, snake is less flexible, you're going to have to move it down a bit. And I think it would be about right here. And this would be 18 inches. Okay, which makes sense. I'd say that's pretty fair. That, that's not much. You only have 18 inches to get your snake in there and do your thing with a three and four inch line. That's a good size snake. Okay, so that would be three and four inch pipe. All right, 18 inches off the wall to the center of the dandy clean out. And remember, all of these dandies I'm talking about are the same size as the pipe. So you can't cheat and put a, a three inch uh, dandy on a four inch pipe. It doesn't work, right? It might work, but it's not gonna pass inspection. Now a four inch dandy right here on a six inch pipe, the book says it's okay. But I've never seen that in anything except very big commercial. And it's very, actually there's not that much of it in Fall River. Not in the old buildings anyway. Okay. Um, Dandy, we did. Now, this one here is a um, the distance from a trap to a vent. Okay, let's flip over to page 178. This one here is more than repetitive. It's just they're asking almost the same question four times. And what did I say, 178? Okay. There's a little chart. It's called table one. What I did is to put vent distance right at the top of the page and highlight it so I can find this thing, right? It doesn't exactly jump out at you. This is one of the most important things in the book. A question you would absolutely need all the time. And you will be, I'm sure you'll be asked about this. So think about this. This is five feet, right? Inch and a half. Can't even think about this one. This one's gonna be automatic, all right? This is the maximum from here, the wheel of the trap, to the edge of the pipe. I had an inspector once who, he didn't, it wasn't my work, I don't know. He was squawking about it to the center of the pipe. Forget it. It's from here, no inspector's gonna bother. If you go from the wheel of the trap, to where it enters the uh, the drain, it's five feet. Okay, now let me show you a way you can get around this a little bit. Let's say you're trying to run from a bathtub to a drain, and the drain's a little bit further away. First of all, you can kick it up to six 
you can go up two inch right here, right? Let's do that right now. If this was six feet, it's got to be two inch pipe. All right, not going to get around that. Now this I've done, I think maybe twice. And I wouldn't be surprised if a few of you guys have already done it. If this pipe is low enough and the drain is over here somewhere, we'll say on a bathtub, you can come down as quick as you can to a 45, right? And then down like that. Is there anything wrong with that? Nope. That's good. Because vertical, don't forget now, only in plumbing, right? The rest of the world doesn't agree with this. We have a 45 degree like that. On either side, that's vertical, but only for plumbing. Okay, that qualifies. So this would be whatever I could slip up in there, as tight as I could make it, whatever the connection is. Maybe a female adapter on the end of the tub waste and overflow with a street 45 stuffed into it, and I can angle it over as, you know, see how much I could get, dry fit it all before you get committed. And that way, you're not going to have an inspector getting on your case for running this six feet, eight inches, or 10 inches. Again, you got an out of town inspector, going to give you a hard time. Uh, get Do it legal. Do this, and you still only get six feet. Okay, nice little trick to remember over the years, especially if this is up higher, maybe a truss floor or something, or even just a regular floor. You can probably grab at least six inches over here. Okay, now the answers for number 107, 108, 109, and 110 are all on uh, the same page, same chart. All right. This is, this is uh, 107, 108. This is 108. Two-inch pipe can go six feet. Three-inch pipe can go eight feet. And four-inch pipe can go 10 feet. I think of all the times you use this one in the inch and a half. This one hardly ever pops up because usually if you're doing a house, the three inch is right there. It's just the stack is right back, right? Right back of the water closet. You may be a foot away. You get just enough room for your fittings. Never mind this. But if this was a floor drain, for example, either one of these, you got to keep these in mind, but you really need them for your exam. All right, let's see how we're doing for time. 12.38. We got a little time. All right. So what I'd like you to do, and uh, this is not anything I talked about, so you didn't miss something. It wasn't part of any assignment. I just realized that I didn't catch the bottom of my screen. No, you didn't miss anything. Okay, if you flip over to page 181 on, in the code book, all right, if you get your code book there, I'll give you a second to take it out. Now, while you're getting it out, uh, I'm going to mention to you about something that uh, we haven't talked about yet. I wasn't going to ignore it, but uh, I wasn't going to get to it uh, today. But I knew that I might. this might end a little bit sooner than uh, 35, 40 minutes, and it did. So uh, look on page 181, and they have uh, storm drains, horizontal. Highlight the horizontal. That's sideways, right? We all know what horizontal means. And if you flip the page onto 182, you have vertical at the top of the page. Highlight the vertical. Absolutely highlight. But what I did, uh, unfortunately, these pages, these charts are on different pages because... Um, you're always flipping back and forth. So here's what I suggest you do. If you go to page 182 and take those numbers, you can jot them down to the left of the chart at the bottom of the page. You don't have to. This is up to you. It just makes it easy. It makes it easy for me. The vertical um, versus the horizontal that's printed on page uh, 181. So I carried the printed stuff on page 182. Table two, and I put it to the left side of the chart. Okay, and I'll explain that. All right, now, floor drains. Uh, 
actually it could be flood drains. It's, it's normally, they call it storm drains. We normally call them roof drains, area drains, another name. Okay, uh, the title 1017, the middle of that page, absolutely highlight this. This is the start of a major chapter. And all you got is that little dinky writing there, 1017 storm drains. Okay, this could be an area drain, but usually it's a roof drain. A lot of you guys have done this, especially you guys that do commercial buildings. I'm sure you got plenty of experience with roof drains. You could probably add to this conversation. Okay, so what happens with a, and I'll call them roof drains, okay? Because I believe that's what most of us call them. The roof drains, um, the area of the roof uh, is drained by the size of pipe that matches that area that can handle that much water. Now, the engineering of this is something that, um, like above our pay grade, it's somebody somewhere figures this stuff out. Obviously, there's charts for it. And this would be different in different parts of the country where they might have, uh, uh, like, say, in Florida, where they might have crazy amounts of rain in a very short time that we don't we never see. So they might have standards that are a little different. Also, their codes are different. And believe it or not, there's a lot more states than you would guess that have no code at all, or maybe codes in the city. But anyway, that's we're not going to get into that today. This is mass code. That's all we're interested in. So let's say that we have, and let's go over to uh, this next page, page 182. This is vertical. This is easy to, very easy to understand. All right. Let's see how, what this means. If we have a roof, and I'm skipping the two inch because we don't normally do two inch roof drains. If we have a roof with a, um, I'll give you the area. All right, let's say we got a roof. Here's a building. Change it. Let's look down on the roof. All right, the code book says if we have a, a roof that has 4,600 square feet, up to 4,600 square feet, I need one four inch drain. Okay. Now let's say that this is a, uh, a building. The drain is going to be right here, kind of like a shower drain. We'll put it right in the middle. Again, that, again that's up to the engineer, right? Obviously it's going to be sloped to the middle of the roof like that. Okay. This would be the outer edge of the building looking down however many stories it is. Now, what they're saying is the 4,600 is what it can handle. So how big would that be? Well, let's see. Would that be 4,600 would be uh, 40 by uh, 100? Yeah. All right. So that's a pretty small building, commercial building anyway. So if we have a building that's 40 by 100, right? Multiply it out, you got 4,000 square feet. Okay. And you have to, the question is, um, what size vertical storm drain do you need? One, A. Normally, if you license, they'll, they'll ask you for two or four or something like that, and it'll get sneaky on the roof and cut a piece out of the roof, and you got to deduct that. And if you don't, you'll probably get the wrong size pipe. But this one, I'll make it straightforward. So let's look on that chart on page 182 for just a minute. On that chart, I need something that can handle 4,000 square feet, one drain, right? And we'll read down, read down. Three-inch pipe can only do 2,200, not even close. All right, here we go, four-inch pipe. Four-inch equals 4,600 capacity right keep that in mind All right so this problem 
the water pitching to here. 4,000 square feet equals a four inch drain. Okay, it's vertical storm drain to be exact. Okay, very brief introduction, I know. But that's pretty much what's, what uh, uh, building drains are like. And uh, I believe it was last year, one of my students last year said that uh, that was a big thing to look for. Maybe that and gas pipe sizing. But I do know other years uh, when I ask students like you guys, let us know what was big on the last test. They'll tell you, be sure you cover uh, roof drains. Be sure you cover gas pipe sizing. Okay, that's the intro to our roof drains. And what we'll do is add to that, like if I needed, uh, if this roof was bigger and I told you you needed two drains, maybe one here and one here, what size, it just builds on this here. And the horizontal, because it's going down and across, most of them don't go straight down, obviously. Uh, then you use the chart on the previous page. But this is basically how it works, right? You go to the right chart, if it's vertical, the other chart, if it's horizontal, and go from there. Okay, that is it on... Uh, like I said, I had a little time left over. I think I went, yeah, I went over by a few minutes. Not bad. Okay, I will see you, as they say, on the other side, and we'll get into uh, chapter.